What's up, humans? So today we're going to be talking about the June 24th Supreme Court overturn of Roe v. Wade. It is not an easy topic, um, but it's been so controversial and has been such a open discussion on social media that I felt the need to get on here and at least educate those who may not know about it uh, and to discuss my emotions and my opinions about it. First and foremost, uh, my husband has been a great support during this time and through my infertility journey. And, you know, he did kind of speak up about this. Uh, he was raised Southern Baptist. And, you know, he always says to me that God will always give you an answer. It just might not be the answer that you're looking for. And God helps those who help themselves. And getting to have that choice is helping yourself. And, you know, going through IVF, a lot of people, I didn't quite realize that there are people in the Christian, you know, religion that uh, truly are against IVF because they believe that you're killing these frozen babies and these frozen embryos. And it's just devastating for me because it's taking so much to go through this process and to know that people can just get pregnant so simply without even thinking about it as I've put more thought into this than anything I have in my life and are religiously against it, it completely breaks my heart. Now, I recommend that you read about Roe vs. Wade and uh, the story about Norma McCorvey and all the new stuff as well. Um, just a little bit to touch on it. Uh, she was better known as Jane Roe. Um, so that was her like, you know, hidden name. And she actually never had an abortion because the court proceedings took so long that her daughter was born and then adopted. Uh, her name is Shelly. And she was actually recently reunited with her half sisters from Norma's previous pregnancies. So Norma was actually a pretty sexual person and she also had uh, many same-sex partners and relationships and um, she was a born again Christian and there's just a lot to kind of like dive in, into with that whole story. Um, very interesting, but the um, check into, look into that um, just so that you can at least get, you know, the minutia of how this all, you know, kind of came to fruition. But with these families too, um, that have to make these choices, like secrets and lies are such a burden. And in a world where we're being more open, now is not the time to create even more shame around such a sensitive topic. Now sure, you can say that our country was founded on religion but that does not change the fact that we have always had a separation of church and state. The Puritans came over, they were fleeing from the Catholics because they were being persecuted, which is why we are protected, and which is why we don't want our country, our country to force religion. So we protected those rights. So you're not special, America's not Catholic, it, it's open. It's open for a reason because we were fleeing from that. Now getting back into what the Bible says, so something that Christians really stick and cling to is the quote that says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. So, so this is the main standpoint that they are fighting for and, and arguing about, but the church's exception with abortion has always been to save the mother. So we do have a lot of laws in place, and I ha have heard of a lot of Christians being like, oh, well, in that case, you know, that's okay. But what if you don't believe in God? Are our religious rights not protected? Yes, they are. They always have been. And this cannot be about religion. So even talking about it is, is truly a waste of time as it cannot be a reason for an amendment. So I would urge Republicans to reform their debates when they're talking about it. But just because the Bible says something that a Christian believes in, that is not a guide to be followed in everyone's legal rights. If that was the case, then we'd all be in jail because we are all sinners and no one can follow the rules of Christ to perfection. I mean, isn't that the whole purpose? That he died for our sins and if you believe that, then you will go to heaven? I mean, it sounds a bit silly 
that Christians want to follow this one thou shall not murder commandment, but not be sentenced to death or thrown in jail for committing adultery, even through thoughts, or perhaps lying and bearing false witness, or taking the Lord's name in vain, or not obeying your mother and father, or stealing, or coveting thy neighbor's house, or anything belonging to them, right? Like, this new Supreme Court ruling infringes on a woman's right to privacy. Is, I mean, what if other parts of our privacy are taken away? Like, these are just baby steps in the wrong direction. The Supreme Court has nine judges and six appointed by Republican presidents. So what can we do? Well, we can contact our elected officials in Congress, and we can urge them to change the size of the Supreme Court. So from nine seats to 13 justices to match the number of circuit courts to the floor. So we can shoot for that. And just because the Constitution doesn't say women have a right to an abortion doesn't mean we shouldn't have these rights. It Being absent doesn't mean we can add what we want, just like people interpret the Bible. Um, I'm kind of hoping that, you know, maybe it was just, uh, you know, let's get rid of the name Roe vs. Wade. We've had it too long. And then Democrats are going to swoop in and we're going to have a new name to represent women's choices because this fight certainly is def is definitely not over. Um, but, uh, you know, I think a lot of people also feel regret and frustration uh, as to why Ruth Bader Ginsburg or uh, the other two Democratic uh, older justices didn't retire while we had them, right? And while we had a, a Democratic president, then we wouldn't be so powerless now if we still had them. So it kind of makes you wonder what was going on there. And I also think this is really interesting, but I was just like, let me read what the amendments are, right? Like the prohibition one, and then they brought that back. And, and then I was like, what is this? What's the newest amendment? So I read that the 27th Amendment says that no law varying the compensation for the services of the senators and representatives shall take effect until an election of representatives shall have intervened which basically prevents members of Congress from granting themselves pay raises during the current session. <laughs> I'm like, what? Like, who messed that up so badly that they needed to make an amendment? Like, was this just not an HR decision? Like, I can't believe it actually became an amendment. And I'm like, maybe they were doing, like, a little here, a little there, and no one noticed at first, and then some idiot did like a whole bunch and they're like nope we need to make an amendment so this doesn't happen again no clue but I just found that interesting now a lot of Christians say we need more God in our lives we need more God in our schools and it should be like it used to like it used to like go for it Kelly go live in the 1700s see how long you survive like just because that's the origin story of our country doesn't mean that's what was decided like saying prayer before games and cheer competitions, sure, okay, was something maybe some people just tolerated. Like I didn't mind it, but there could have been someone that did, and it wasn't anything that was taken away from us. It was something that actually you imposed on other students without asking them if it was okay. And, I mean, that's all you'd have to do. Hey, is everything okay with saying a prayer? And if you're not, then you can step away. You know, it's, it's something that maybe you just weren't being considerate about. Uh, God in the Constitution uh, changes nothing. More war, back in the day, happened when the Constitution was invented. So this let's go back in time thing makes no sense to me. I, I like how people are like, wish it was like the olden days. I'm like, does everyone just always say that? Like, I don't want to turn 80 and just say that all the time, you know? Because, like, I feel like we do live in a better future. So I don't know why we're trying to ruin it, but... Um, you know, and I think if people had a glimpse into how things used to be, they'd be like, oh, okay, I get it now. And, you know, there's, it was quoted that if everyone lived their life by the ways of God, we'd be good. Okay. I have heard people say this before, but that's not human nature. And it's as if you understood nothing in the Bible. Like we literally all fall short in the glory of God because we are all sinners. So if you follow the Bible correctly, then you would understand this. And, and, and in fact, if, if you follow communism on paper, the world would be a greater place, right? The far right are the ones pushing this agenda and not even realizing it. That's not freedom. That's control. 
Like, think about it. You wouldn't be able to covet your neighbor's house, just like the Bible says not to, because we'd all have our homes and equal and paid by the government. Is that what you want? No. So stop involving religion and cherry picking when you deem it useful because it's not really what you want. So you need to stop mixing them. It's just hypocrisy and it's it's not what you want and what you really want is actually kind of liberal <laughs> with maybe more conservative finances, but like a lot of liberals are fine with some conservative finances. But you know, I just feel like people use these trigger words and they're like, oh, the the heartbeat, right? And so then people harp on that and then they aren't really thinking of, of what these abortion laws are actually doing to women. You're just mixing personal religion and life choices into our rights. And something that the daughter of Jane Roe or Norma said that kind of stuck with me um, just goes to show with kind of the brainwashing and manipulation you can have without knowing the full story. Uh, but she said that the only thing she knew about being pro-life or pro-choice, or even Roe versus Wade, um, was that this person, the mother, had to make it okay for people to go out and be promiscuous. How awful is that? How awful is that we have men running around saying, you know, you need to close your legs, keep your legs shut. I swear if I hear that one more time, it just boils, boils my blood. Yet a lot of these men will brag about sticking their dicks in women and adding a notch to their belt while simultaneously scorning them for getting pregnant. You got them pregnant. If you're sitting there saying you didn't get anyone pregnant, then you're more than likely just lucky that you didn't. And if you never wore protection or you pulled out and prayed, then you are irresponsible. You are willing to spread sexually transmitted diseases and should be saying that you will be taking responsibility when and if you get a woman pregnant. Just because you got lucky or that you didn't happen to get someone pregnant doesn't make you better. Because you skirted by by the hairs on your chubby chin chin doesn't make you smarter. And I've heard so many guys brag about their sexcapades and are completely misogynistic. And these are the ones that are sitting here claiming that women are sluts and need to close their legs. And there's always these religious groups standing outside of Planned Parenthood yelling at the women. I'm like, where are the religious groups yelling at the men? Oh, wait, the men are not around, right? Because a lot of these men will support emphatically a woman's choice to abort. And I believe every man should be forced by law to show up to an abortion clinic and should be fined if they do not participate. I mean, of course, if that's at the will of the woman, I think the woman should have the choice over her own body, which in most states and, in you know, our country, we do have that right. Um, and and that's how it should be. It's our body. We're the one who are going to have to withstand everything. And But they should be yelled at and screamed at and, you know, uh, scorned on social media uh, and But the truth is, I, I don't want anyone to be yelled at or screamed at. I want everyone to become educated on a fetus and a zygote and the complications that can occur and how embryos work and the financial burden and lack of medical care we provide as a country. I mean, there will be more illegal activity, suicides, drug abuse, mental illness, overpopulation than ever before. I mean, unless the suicides balance them out. Now two deaths from one body. Yeah, that's the solution. At the end of the day, an abortion is a private matter between a woman and her doctor. And an abortion has been practiced since ancient times. Abortion legislation, however, has never been in the hands of a woman. Now here's some more food for thought. If a fetus is a person, it should get child support, due process, and citizenship. I mean, if a fetus resides in its mother and receives all nutrition and care from its mother's body, then the mother should be eligible for child support as soon as the fetus is declared a person, right? At conception. The 14th Amendment declares that all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. The key word being born. The word born with the new abortion bans takes on a new meaning. I mean, in a lot of other countries, people celebrate when they were in utero, 
right? And so when when is it? So when are we deciding that we are humans? So the person inside of the womb is technically a U.S. citizen. So you can't deport the mom who's an immigrant. Now now she's going to be able to stay there and have the baby, right? I'm sure all Republicans would love that, wouldn't they? All of their precious immigrants getting to stay in America. Oh. And on another topic, the gay community is scared that their marriages are going to be revoked. And a woman's right to contraceptives as well. I mean, what are we doing? What are, why are we going backwards 50 years? I don't understand. Like, we've literally come so far and we've seen what good it's done for our world. Well, I don't get – this just sounds like a literally a personal opinion, which has nothing to do with your life or Kavanaugh's life and people need to stay out of it. The phrase, in God we trust, was coined in the 50s by a man named Charles E. Bennett of Florida. And that was uh, 1955, and that was under Dwight E. Eisenhower. And, uh, you know, that was because we were fighting communism. And, you know, yes, America was a Christian country. Um, but Congress states that they shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, which is why we have satanic cults. That's why we have those things. I mean— you know, Christians, I'm sure, don't agree with that, but whatever, that's our country. It's it's free, and um, we never got signed into law uh, with our Constitution because we could never get enough votes, right? That's how it's always been with, um, with our uh, abortion uh, rights because uh, it's like, well, how come we don't have an amendment for that? It's tough. It's really hard to get an amendment passed, um, and even with the power of the Republicans like Trump— he still couldn't, you know, change the laws. That's why he only had the power to push executive orders, and he did a lot while he was president, um, which is why when Biden came in, he just reversed them all when he came in, you know, uh, putting, you know, terms, um, term limits on Supreme Court justices. While that sounds like a wonderful idea, would just get confusing because we'd be constantly changing our laws way too frequently, and it would mess up jail sentences and all this stuff. So I get why they stay for so long. Um, but, you know, all we can do is, I guess, I don't know, assassinate our current Supreme Court justices, right? No, I'm just kidding. Ha, ha, ha. Um, but, you know, <laughs> we just need to appoint new ones. Sadly, there have, there have already been threats, and I, I do not agree with that, of course. Um, but as we know, threats don't seemingly count <clears throat> January 6th. <clears throat> Abortion is a very difficult decision to make. And a lot of babies are diagnosed with life limiting medical conditions, uh, in the womb and, or genetic and structural conditions. Um, so sometimes they won't be growing in the normal way. Uh, another thing is like ectopic pregnancies. Um, these are very scary uh, because the baby is actually growing inside of the fallopian tube and the tube can burst and then make the woman infertile or bleed to death and kill her. Um, so there's a lot of different ways um, and, and babies don't grow in a normal way sometimes. And imagine if you had to come to that decision and not knowing, hey, if you take this baby to full term, we might have to cut it out of you before it's born or it could die along the way and you have a stillbirth. And I mean, just because of the laws, right? I mean, imagine too, if that baby was born and what if you weren't a rich person who can't afford these medical bills that sometimes are not covered, right? Or that you know that that baby might have an early death, you know, and I know you say, well, then that's God's will. But it, it's it's a choice that I think is is responsible. It, it, you're just really being a responsible person, and you're putting yourself at risk for death, and and everything we've got risk. Even choosing cancer treatment, you know, stepping into the unknown is a scary, scary thing. And doctors only know so much. So sometimes when we see a problem arise, the safer choice is to abort rather than to take the baby to term and possibly killing yourself. And some people say, how did they not know they were pregnant? Because some women's bodies react differently. They don't have regular cycles or sometimes the test appears negative. So by the time they hit six weeks and finally find out, it's too little too late for them. And, and by, by them, I mean a man and a woman. It should be this way. But, um, you know, different things like low hormone levels, 
um, can happen as well. Um, and you know, it's, it's something that men don't really pay attention to or, or know about. And sometimes it's too late to, to treat these things. Um, and regardless of the laws, people will, you know, still get abortions. Drugs are illegal. And we listen to Johnny Depp talk openly about it for weeks doing cocaine. You know, people will do whatever they want. And unsafe abortions are the third leading cause of maternal deaths worldwide. And they lead to an additional 5 million largely preventable disabilities, according to the World Health Organization. And, you know, deaths and injuries from unsafe abortions, they are actually preventable. And the men just get to live, you know. And we are in this word right now, the viable word, which means it could survive outside the womb. Um, and I think, you know, we are just being so specific on, on what it is and what our opinions are that at the end of the day, I just think it should be the woman's opinion, regardless of what you think. It doesn't matter what you think, you know? I mean, at the end of the day, we're all going to die and we're going to have to face our God or face whatever it is that you are prepared to face. In the early stages, it's just a complex of cellular elements, is what the scientists call it. And we can't allow religion to determine what is human for our rights. The unlawful premeditation killing is of one human to another is what murder is. That's the definition. So this is why we don't go to jail for the death of small insects or animals. I mean, we have like human or animal rights, of course, and there are state laws on killing living animals, but none of the abortion of animal fetuses anyone goes to jail for. So if an animal is only considered living once out of the body, should this not be the same for humans? I mean, why can we shout and kill or euthanize animals when they're fully formed, but we cannot kill a fetus? I mean, we're even allowed to kill animals when they're in pain. That's allowed. I mean, especially if if we're suffering, like the animal is suffering, and, or if a baby is suffering. I mean, to me, let it be between, you know, you and God the judge, and it's your choice. On earth, our laws do not involve the fetus, but only humans. A fetus is not a human being until it is out of the body. And it's like, I also love how it's perfectly legal to join an army and kill innocent people in the name of war. Like, and we celebrate this. Like, we're just, just disgusting humans. If we simply made murder illegal and governments followed their own laws, then we wouldn't be allowed to have war. And if Korea found out that Kim Jong-un, you know, killed Americans in war, then his own people would have to persecute him. You know, same thing in Russia, wherever. I mean, China was over there enforcing abortions and murdering real babies. I mean, that's a real issue. You know, the fact is I feel sad when I see a mom hit their child, but I can't interfere with that. It's not my life. I feel bad when I hear that moms are doing drugs or getting wasted and their kids miss school and they miss camps because their parents aren't responsible. I mean, you can feel bad that someone aborted their child, but you cannot interfere with that choice just as you can't interfere with these other choices. You're not the one who will be responsible for raising it. Like, have you ever seen a shitty parent and been like, man, I feel bad for that kid? Like, why force that if someone is like, I'm not ready to raise a child and I don't have the help or the money, you know, or the capability to do this, or I don't even have a husband to help me, you know, it, you make it like, oh, it's so simple. It's, it's really not a cut and dry situation. So my heart goes out to all the women and anybody who ha is having to deal with the upcoming laws and to any families who think it won't happen to me. Well, I thought that. And here I am three and a half years later, not able to have a baby, thinking, this will never happen to me. All the women in my family got pregnant. Well, maybe you'll think that'll never happen to my 16-year-old daughter. She'll never get pregnant. And then you might be faced with that decision. Or you might be faced with an ectopic pregnancy. I don't wish that upon you. But I do wish that you educate yourself and you can try to see another perspective. We have now put the decisions in the state's hands and these immediate trigger laws that were set prior to this conclusion are going to throw clinics into chaos because they weren't prepared and they aren't fully sure of what they could be prosecuted for. Some of these doctors could be fined up to $100,000, lose their licenses within days without fully understanding what the new laws per state are. And it's so frustrating to hear that Justice Kavanaugh is like, oh, I'm not, you know, basically he's not such a bad guy. Like, oh, there'll be other states that you can go to to get, to get an abortion. You know, there's no revoke, 
revocation of your constitutional right to travel. Like, how about just not make it so difficult in the first place? Like, you're acting like you're a savior, like, because, oh, well, we didn't take everything away. You can go to other states as long as they're cool with it. How about just not make this so difficult, you know? And Justice Thomas implied that we should reconsider and look at other things like gay rights. Maybe we should review that, just not right now, but we should review those things. So, of course, people are freaking out at how blasé they are acting about these basic human rights um for me we're continuing this division and eventually america could be split into two there was a woman that i saw and she said in protest and she was so excited and she said it's a great day because finally people will see that abortion is not necessary and not needed and I'm like, of all the things you could have said, you could have been like, yay, people aren't killing babies. I believe in life and, you know, all these other things. You said it's not necessary. There are so many necessary reasons. And it's going to be the death of the mother. How come that doesn't bother you? Because without the abortion, the mother could die. So I don't understand why that doesn't sadden you and and to understand that if the mother dies so does the baby how does that help anybody I also feel like the abortion clinics were doing so well with parental consent and funding and getting counseling and we were just doing the right things and providing and I do understand that then most often given for having an abortion was because of financial resources or not being ready, being scared, not having a partner. And I know that seems like a cop out, but I feel like at the end of the day, if they feel that way, that means they don't have the right support in their life and they don't feel like they would be a good mother. And I felt like we were getting to a place where we were offering more of that support because I know that's what Democrats want. Of course, of course we would rather you know, a young woman who isn't prepared to say, you know what, I had some great counseling and I've decided to keep the baby or put it up for adoption. And I felt like we were getting to that point. And now I feel like we're back to this fear. Now, now women are fearful and they might be more impulsive and feel more inclined to go a more dangerous route to receive an abortion because they don't have the rights they thought they did. This verbiage of a fetal heartbeat and all these things that create a visceral response is, you know, an, an attempt to redefine what viability is. And in reality, what viability is, is that a fetus can survive outside of the uterus. And generally, that's not possible for another 18 weeks after detection of a heartbeat. And a baby can only survive outside of the womb as long as it has been 24 weeks. This is not a day for celebration. And I don't find any intelligence in this. I actually find it to be completely ignorant and misinformed. And I'm really wondering what these justices were thinking and if they even had any real conversations about women who have endured an abortion and as to the reasons as to why or if they talk to any doctors about about it to make a educated decision um rather than just simply saying you're killing a life um you know texas republicans celebrated and uh, you know general ken paxton uh wrote on twitter now you know, it's illegal in Texas and said he'd be closing his office and making it an annual holiday. Like, these are just like nasty things to say. You know, even if it was the other way around, like you don't run around saying these nasty things when this is such a heartbreaking thing to so many people. Ted Cruz said that the reversal of Roe vs. Wade is nothing short of a massive victory for life and will save the lives of millions of innocent babies. Um, you know, Trump had something similar to say. Um, Matt Rinaldi called it a historic day, which Republicans pro-life advocates have waited for a generation. And the irony of all of that is there are tons of Republicans. Like if we could go around 
looking at all of the Republicans who've had abortions. Like, it's just so much hypocrisy. So, you know, it's almost like if I were to see a Republican go into an abortion office, I think they should be refused. I think it should be like, how are you registered? Are you registered Republican? You cannot have an abortion in this state where we allow it because we're saving room for the Democrats who wanted to keep Roe versus Wade. Let them make their rules and then maybe you will see how devastating of a choice this is to our culture, to our country. And your cocktail of the day is the baby blue cocktail served in a martini glass. Shake all ingredients with ice and fine strain into a chilled glass. One and a half ounces of dry gin, three fourths ounces blue curacao liqueur, one third ounces of grapefruit juice, and one third ounces of pineapple juice. Add an orange zest twist and serve. Enjoy. This has been Katie Rose served straight up with a twist. Catch my follow-up Fridays on YouTube, where I respond to your YouTube comments on any thoughts or questions relating to each week's episode. It gives you a chance to have a more intimate conversation with me and opens up the door to new topics. Find me at my YouTube channel, Katie Rose Straight Up With A Twist. And remember, if you're thinking it, I'm probably talking about it. This podcast is produced, hosted, and edited by Katie Rose. A Rosebud Production.